In this series, we're going to discuss the properties of liquids and solids, the so-called condensed phases of matter. In the last series, we looked at gases, which are a relatively simple phase of matter because we assume that the particles involved are not interacting with each other. In the condensed phases, where molecules or atoms find themselves relatively close to one another, we can no longer ignore the forces and interactions that occur between atoms and molecules, so-called intermolecular forces. And that's where we're going to start in this video series, digging into the various types of intermolecular forces and eventually learning how to predict the dominant intermolecular force either in a pure compound or a mixture based on considerations of the molecular structures of the species involved. And then we're going to move to a discussion of the properties of liquids, things like cohesion, adhesion, and viscosity. And then we'll talk a little bit about phase transitions, the thermochemistry involved, how we think about the molecular picture, all that good stuff. Phase diagrams, which indicate the phase of a substance at various temperatures and pressures and the temperature and pressure dependence of phase transitions. And then we'll dig into the solid state of matter, learning how to classify solids based on their submicroscopic or molecular, molecular level structure. And finally, we'll investigate the lattice structures in crystalline solids, which have regularly repeating arrays of atoms. Because of the regularly repeating nature of crystals, we can get a great deal of information just from one teeny tiny little chunk of that crystal called the unit cell. So we'll dig into analysis of unit cells in that last video series. Let's start with intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces are the attractions between particles, atoms, molecules, ions, etc., and they're due fundamentally to electrostatic phenomena. Opposite charges attract, and so the full charges in ions, the partial charges in molecules containing permanent dipoles or temporary dipoles can be involved in attractive forces. And the reason we care about intermolecular forces so much as we turn our attention to liquids and solids is that these different phases of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, have different strengths of intermolecular forces. IMFs are much more relevant to the solid phase where atoms are very close together, essentially in contact, than in the gas phase where molecules are very, very far apart from one another. And the particular phase of a chunk of matter at a given temperature and pressure depends on a balance between the kinetic energies of the molecules involved, how fast they're moving, and the potential energy associated with attractive intermolecular forces. At high temperatures, large kinetic energies, the kinetic energy overcomes that stabilization due to intermolecular forces. At lower temperatures, the stabilizing effects of intermolecular forces kick in, those attractive forces kick in, and we get these condensed phases. We want to be careful to contrast what we call bonds and what we might call intramolecular forces, forces happening inside of a molecule, with intermolecular forces happening between molecules. And note that although we've already laid out this idea that IMS are related to electrostatic attractions, the type of charge involved can either be permanent or temporary. So we can talk about permanent charges in ions, plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two, and partial charges in permanent dipoles, polar molecules, like we saw in earlier discussions of molecular structure. We can also think about temporary dipoles, dipoles induced instantaneously due to the random motion of electrons or induced by a nearby charge. Both can be relevant to intermolecular forces. And as we've seen, solids and liquids form as the temperature goes to zero Kelvin, as things get colder, as molecules slow down, and the stabilizing effect of intermolecular forces kicks in, that potential energy kicks in, and eventually surpasses the kinetic energy of the particles in motion. As an example of contrasting inter and intramolecular forces, check out this figure containing two HCl molecules interacting with one another. There's an intramolecular force in the form of the HCl bonds, but there are also intermolecular forces as represented by this red dotted line. Those are also known as van der Waals forces. So, for example, we can highlight the covalent bonds here. These are what we would call intramolecular forces. These tend to be much shorter in distance and much higher in energy, much stronger than intermolecular forces. Intramolecular forces covalent bonds are much stronger than intermolecular forces. 
The intermolecular force involves a longer distance and a lower energy and generally a weaker interaction. So here, for example, the interaction is electrostatic between the partially positive hydrogen and the partially negative chlorine. We could have predicted this dipole moment using ideas about polarity that we've already seen. And because this is just a relatively weak electrostatic interaction, the energy of this interaction is weaker than a covalent bond inside a molecule.